Hello everybody and welcome to the channel for another digital painting video. For today's video I have something very special. What I am about to show you today is the process of a commission I did for the biggest podcast about Warhammer 40,000 in Spanish called La Voz de Horus. If you speak Spanish and you are a fan of Warhammer 40k you must check them out in case you don't know about them yet. The podcast is over the top quality and they cover absolutely everything related with Warhammer 40k. I will leave a link to the podcast in the description of the video. They were in need of a new logo slash image to accompany their name and they wanted some portrait. Of course, with their name La Voz de Horus, which means in English the voice of Horus, the subject of the portrait was pretty much straightforward, the architrator himself. But before we get started with it, I want to remind you about the live streams every Saturday at 9 p.m. Central European time. We paint and design characters uh, live like these ones and we talk about art, the industry in general, career tips and all type of nerdy topics. We have a lot of fun and I'm happy to see the community grow with each stream. So if you have not checked it out yet, pass by and join the crew. Alright, so let's start with the portrait of the Architrader Horus. From the very beginning, I knew I wanted two things out of this portrait. One, that the portrait needed to be painterly and not over polished, so it could add some roughness to the character. And second, that I wanted to depict Horus at his peak of corruption. What a moment for that! And maybe when he's confronting the Emperor for the first time after his betrayal and just before the final battle between them, right? With this in mind, I needed him to show an attitude of hubris, calm and overconfidence, but also a certain level of disdain in his expression. At this point, he is not only extremely powerful, at his peak as a matter of fact, but he's also hating the Emperor. He really hates him. So this attitude and feeling are very important to be present in the portrait. That is why from the very start I paint him tilting his head upward, looking down at us, but also slightly turned to the side. Another important aspect for this portrait was the fact that it was going to be used as a logo and therefore it needed to be read easily from far away. For this, I thought I needed to work with high contrast using the lighting and colors. That is why I thought the use of the red color would work fantastically for that purpose, but at the same time to underline the evil aspect of the character, even demonic. The first stage of the portrait consisted on working on establishing the foundation of the pose and expression, and the light setting and color palette. This stage, he looks more like a normal person, but little by little I will start applying more bulkiness to represent an anatomy closer to a mighty primer. Another important aspect to have in mind is that since I wanted to show him at this point at the peak of his corruption, I had to abandon his humanity side and focus more on the monster that he became. In the novels at this point, or even before this point, he is described as a monstrosity, corrupted and depraved of his original glory and mighty aura. That is also why I decided to make his eyes completely yellow, to reinforce the fact that he is not more the Empress son, but a monster corrupted by demonic powers. Also, the yellow color offered a good opportunity to create more visual punch in such a dark portrait overall.
From this point, I spent most of the time trying to nail the facial expression that would fit my idea of the moment and also adding the Terminator armor to frame his head.
Now I started adding all these omnipresent cables around his head that connect him to his armor. And I even tried one from the nose, but at the end I removed it. At this stage, most of the main elements in the portrait are already set, so it is a matter of defining some things here and there, like adding some arcane symbols to the armor and increase the saturation of the color red to add more visual punch to the overall image.
And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the process of this portrait of Oris as much as I enjoyed painting it. Let me know in the comments, please. And like always, if you have any feedback or suggestions for new content, please write it down as well on the comment section. Don't forget to join the live stream on Saturdays at 9 p.m. Central European time. And please leave a like and subscribe if you have not done it yet. It really helps independent artists like myself to continue doing this. And until next time, have a good one and bye bye.